Today, I'll be going over some big breaking news stories. For example, there could be a massive attack from Iran on Israel in the next two days. I'll be giving you a big update on Donald Trump's documents case down in the state of Florida and how Jack Smith is throwing a giant baby fit when he doesn't get his way. I will also be talking about some huge news coming out of the different states on Donald Trump's polling and how they just blocked people like Mark Zuckerberg from injecting hundreds of millions of dollars towards electing Democrat presidents. I have so much to go over with you today. This is going to be a long news update, but it will not disappoint. Let's go ahead and jump into today's news. In some breaking news, I told you about how Israel attacked a consulate in Iran and killed one of their top generals. Now, leaders of Iran say they plan to strike Israel in the next 48 hours, according to leaks coming out of CIA intel. This revenge attack, if it happens, could escalate the war between Iran and Israel in the Middle East. Now, both countries are on high alert as their hatred for each other intensifies. I'm praying this attack is thwarted now that the CIA has released this information, but this was a big breaking uh, headline this morning. I have another update coming out of Florida relating to Donald Trump's court case with Jack Smith and the FBI raiding his Mar-a-Lago property in order to secure classified documents. Special Prosecutor Jack Smith rebuked Judge Eileen Cannon for saying the Presidential Records Act will play a part in the court case and a part in the jury instructions. Jack Smith is trying to have the Presidential Records Act uh, removed, which specifically protects presidents for having documents after they leave uh, office. He wants this completely thrown out and he does not want it mentioned at all to the jury pool. Now, he does want the Espionage Act to be included and part of the jury instructions. So he's saying Donald Trump took these documents from the White House in order to commit espionage and not because he has the privilege of holding on to his own documents as a former sitting president of the United States. So Special Prosecutor Jack Smith doesn't want a former president to have his lawful protection under the Presidential Records Act because it gives Trump too much protection from being labeled a spy under the Espionage Act. Can you believe this? They don't want the law to protect Trump, but they can use it to try to put him in jail for the rest of his life? This guy really is deranged. Now, Trump's lawyers have asked for the entire court case to be thrown out specifically because of the Presidential Records Act and the fact that Donald Trump was a president. However, Jack Smith says Donald Trump should have gotten permission document by document in order to take stuff home with him. Now, let me know in the comments, is Jack Smith demanding too much of Judge Eileen Cannon by asking her not to protect Trump with the law and instead to label him a spy under the Espionage Act? Let me know in the comments, please, what you think. Now, keep in mind, another former president, former President Bill Clinton kept top secret documents in his sock drawer and a court determined that it was perfectly legal because of one fact. He was a former president. I believe that this will end well for Donald Trump, but I guess it makes sense why they were rifling through First Lady Melania's underwear drawer because that's where Bill Clinton kept his top secret documents. All right, now, two big things happened in Nebraska and in Wisconsin. Nebraska first. 
A state senator by the name of Mike McDonald announced today he can no longer be associated with the Democrat Party. He says they've gone too far. He doesn't believe in them anymore. And he is switching to become a Republican. The second thing is huge. Nebraska, like Maine, uh, in their constitution, breaks up their electoral votes. So now Congress and their governor are trying to switch it so that all five electoral votes from Nebraska would either all go to a Democrat or all go to a Republican. No more splitting the vote. Over in Wisconsin, a mayor's seat was flipped from a deep Democrat blue to a Republican red mayor. Now, this is a spot where Biden supposedly beat Trump by nine points, only to have it flip red. I don't think so. Also, Congress in Wisconsin is voting to block billionaires like Mark Zuckerberg from rigging presidential elections. As you know, Mark Zuckerberg poured $400 million into getting Joe Biden elected. Now, Wisconsin says this is illegal and it was inappropriate for that money to be accepted and used the way that it was. Suddenly, Wisconsin just got much redder by just following voting laws. Isn't that interesting? When they follow the law, it goes red. When they don't, it goes blue. But I don't know. I'm just a guy on the internet. Okay, now, according to news sources, <laughs> you guys, this has Biden's re-election campaign just absolutely sizzling in their brains. According to news sources, Donald Trump is beating Biden in six of the seven swing states. However, they admit it's close in Minnesota and also in Georgia. However, the interesting thing is these same news store stories show that Donald Trump has a chance at taking Virginia and also New Mexico, which would absolutely be devastating to Joe Biden's reelection. Plus, Biden is losing young Democrat voters he had locked down just three years ago. He promised student loan debt forgiveness only to then uh, only deliver on a fraction of his promise. Also, college uh, students that easily voted for Joe Biden when they lived in a bubble are now in the workforce, working 40 to 60 hours a week and barely keeping their heads above water remembering how affordable life was under Donald Trump. So they hated Donald Trump, but life was affordable. Now they're working their guts out in the real world and they're getting their butts kicked. And they're saying, wait a minute, uh, Biden isn't going to forgive our student loan debt and life has suddenly become extremely expensive. The economic policy under Biden's administration have proven to be a massive disappointment. Many young individuals are becoming increasingly enraged with the elderly, seemingly senile president, who some argue should be residing in a retirement facility, not in the White House. Moreover, younger generations are realizing that the prospect of owning an average American home is practically unobtainable. The dream of being a homeowner is fading into obscurity. These sentiments are becoming evident in recent, recent polling statistics. The southern border continues to be a major concern for many Americans, as it should be. New data out today shows in Texas alone, Border Patrol, the police, and National Guard have confiscated 469 million lethal doses of fentanyl. That's enough fentanyl, if touched, to kill every single person in North America, Central America, and South America. You guys, that's just what they stopped. That's just what they caught. It scares me to think about how much fentanyl is floating around in our country right now. The war in Ukraine continues to escalate, with Russia gaining ground and Western desperation increasing. Despite a relative lull in media coverage, Russia's advancements are becoming more apparent, prompting desperate measures from NATO powers. 
French President Emmanuel Macron is threatening to send French troops in in order to stop Putin. However, such actions risk igniting direct conflict between NATO nations and Russia, potentially leading to nuclear war, as warned by Pyotr Tolstoy, vice president of the Russian Duma. Now, FATO, uh, NATO excuse me, involvement is escalating. They're planning to send in F-16 fighter jets, despite the vulnerability of the Ukrainian airfields to Russian attacks. They would be better off using drones versus F-16 jets, according to many military analysts. However, Russians' hypersonic missiles pose a significant threat, potentially rendering NATO's efforts futile and escalating the conflict further. As tensions rise, the risk of nuclear conf confrontation is actually expanding. I mean, just, just look at what I shared with you a few minutes ago. Uh, Israel is attacked by Iran. Iran is now attacked by Israel. And now Iran says, according to CIA data, we are about to launch a strike against Israel directly. Th this, this is escalation, right? Now, some fear Russia's intentions, claiming it poses an existential threat to NATO and Europe. Such assertions are dubious. However, Russian President Vladimir Putin, he, he lacks the resources and the incentive to try to invade Eastern Europe. Furthermore, the notion of restoring the Soviet Union is unrealistic. Putin simply does not want to be a border state with Ukraine if NATO is going to intervene. Now, Russia remains committed to preventing Ukraine's ascension into NATO, but NATO seems hell-bent on bringing NATO into their alliance. The U.S. involvement in the conflict is crucial for Ukraine's continuation of the war, with the Biden administration seeking additional taxpayer money to fund Ukraine's war. However, the process has been fraught with challenge, including delays in Congress and uncertainty regarding the allocation of taxpayer money. Despite the financial support, Ukraine's ability to procure essential weaponry remains limited as Russia continues to outproduce more ammunition than all NATO nations combined. Presidential candidate RFK Jr. said in a recent interview that Biden is a greater threat to democracy than Donald Trump. Now, this was the first time RFK Jr. was allowed on CNN in over 10 years. However, RFK Jr. clarified his comments on the Chris Cuomo show by stating, it's now been proven that within 37 hours of Joe Biden becoming president, he held a private secret meeting with all the big tech platforms and instructed them to shut down dissenting speech about Biden from his new political enemies. This has all been proven in court cases against Joe Biden that are going on right now, according to RFK Jr. Now, do, you, do we really have freedom of speech if a sitting president can order the new town square to block any negative speech against himself or his policies? To me, this sounds like a story I should be reporting on in North Korea, not in the United States of America. However, Joe Biden is a bully that is trying to control everyone and everything around him so that he can remain the king of his new castle. Lastly, you all know that behind Biden's back, his White House staff were pushing Transgender Visibility Day, completely oblivious to the fact that it was Easter Sunday, which is celebrated by over a billion people. Well, after doing some digging, did you know that the Biden team made no mention of Transgender Visibility Day on any of their Spanish communication channels? They were completely silent on the matter because they know the majority of Hispanics and Latins are devoted to their faith and their families and that the message would be rejected uh, wholeheartedly. It's kind of like when Walt Disney Company says, we stand for LGBTQ plus 2SA rights at all costs, 
But then when it comes to posting any content on Islamic nations, they, they completely back down. They bury the information because they know these buyers would absolutely revolt. That's exactly what the White House did to the Hispanic and Latin communities. They lie to you. They lie to you every single day. By the way, thank you guys so much for liking and sharing these videos. When you give these videos a like, it tells YouTube's algorithm to send it out to more and more people. And this channel has been getting suppressed lately. So thank you so much. Uh, Kilobyte is the, if the U.S. lets Biden win the election, most of our freedoms and rights will be gone over the next four years. Look how crazy it's been these last 3.5 years. Let your voices be heard at the ballot box. Yes. And I have a special guest coming on in a couple hours that is going to tell us exactly how to do that. Thank you so much for the super chat. Okay, now independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Um, ha has bashed on CNN. I, I guess they took the clip that I just told you about and they actually edited it in such a way to embarrass him, to enrage liberal Democrats against him. What they were really doing is trying to show that they allow anybody to come on their network. But what they were really doing is they were trying to enrage the Democrat voter base because they are terrified of how many votes RFK Jr. is going to steal from Joe Biden. RFK Jr. likely will not win this election, but he could be the single reason that Donald Trump wins the election by stealing all of those votes from Joe Biden. Wouldn't that be absolutely amazing? <laughs> all right. Now, last night I told you about the 7.5 earthquake in Taiwan. The White House just offered to support Taiwan following a significant earthquake, which resulted in hundreds of injuries and at least nine deaths at this time. The earthquake, the most powerful to hit Taiwan in 25 years, occurred during morning rush hour, uh, leading to school evacuations and a tsunami warning. Uh, while Taiwan's monitoring agency recorded the earthquake, the United States said it was actually bigger than what they projected. There were then uh, aftershocks, which led to the collapse of several buildings. Boeing is back in the spotlight after Secretary of State Antony Blinken was forced to delay his trip from Paris to Brussels because his Boeing 737 was having mechanical issues. The journey between Paris and Brussels is approximately 190 miles, uh, but before taking off after meeting with Emmanuel Macron, uh, they had an issue and that had to be shut down. Gosh, kind of makes you a little bit nervous to fly on Boeing with all of the negative news that they are getting lately. Okay, now listen to this. The campaign of uh, presidential candidate Donald Trump and the RNC announced today that they raised $65.6 .6 in March. And this after calling Donald Trump broke Don. By the end of March, they reported having $93 million to push forward the Trump election campaign. So they actually have a significant pool of money, and they're hoping that as time goes on, they'll continue to raise money in order to put Donald Trump back in the White House. Okay, now get this. This is, this is crazy. New York Mayor Eric Adams is trying to blame TikTok for the crime in New York. During an interview on Good Morning America, he said that the recent assault on women was because TikTok was popularizing attacking women. This, this is crazy. For those of you who don't know, there's been an epidemic in New York City where, uh, sorry, let me take this off. Ugh, sorry getting like my blood pressure up just talking about these stories. Okay, so this is what's going on. Uh, New York was having an epidemic where men were walking up to women and literally punching them in the face, breaking their jaws, their cheekbones, leaving them with welts, bruises, just out of nowhere attacks on women. 
instead of protecting women and solving the crime issue, they're literally now blaming TikTok, saying TikTok is making it popular or common to attack women. I mean, this is a bunch of bull crap. It's because there's crazy people in New York that know that they can literally punch women in the face and that they won't be prosecuted. That they could punch a woman right in her face, break her cheekbone, break her jaw, and they'll be back on the streets committing crimes before dinner time. This is disgusting. No wonder businesses are fleeing New York at the fastest rate ever. It's just disgusting to me. They don't protect their women on the streets. They don't protect their women in families. They don't protect their women in shelters. And they don't protect their women in sports. What the heck is going on in New York? I live in Utah where we don't put up with this bull crap. You attack our women, you're going to find out just how crazy the men in Utah will become. All right, now, this is my update for today. I know that there was a lot of information that we went through. Uh, let's hope that uh, Iran does not uh, do this attack on Israel. I do not want this to escalate. Uh, let's continue to hope that things go well for Donald Trump down in Florida. Uh, it's amazing how much money they have raised as the Biden administration <laughs> tries to say that uh, broke Don can't raise any money because of his 91 indictments. Well, guess what? Most of the court cases are actually going in Donald Trump's favor. And so <laughs> we'll, we'll see what ends up happening. How about Jack Smith trying to get rid of the Presidential Records Act uh, and, and label Donald Trump a spy? Absolutely crazy. All right, make sure to check out last night's broadcast. I, I dropped some absolutely insane receipts on you guys with really, really great information. Also, later today, I have an incredible guest coming on and we'll be doing a live interview. Until then, I want you to remember that you are amazing. I love you. Thank you for liking this video. Thank you for being a subscribed member of my community. And I will see you on the next video.